Hmm. <laughs> Am I sitting too close? <laughs> Let me back up a little bit. I was just like, <laughs> um, I finished off the Mayan calendar world reading kind of quick as soon as I recognized it was over 29 minutes and I didn't want to go 30 so I just said now must go and I clicked that was it I took a I I don't know if I said much I'm going to watch it later but right now I'm going to tell you about the tarot like how can I, there, the Tarot Handbook, Pract Practical Application of Ancient Visual Symbols by Angelus Arian. A lovely person um, I never knew personally, but feel like I get to know through her book. And yeah, through her book and her representations and the words that she has put in by that others have spoken but just take a moment with me uh, and just say these words as I'll say them out loud and you just repeat them I ground myself I'm going to start over again I connect to my deep self And you didn't have to say that part. I'm going to start over again. That you could leave that out. But if you've already said it, it's okay. It won't mess anything up. I open myself. I'm really out of it today. I like it though. It's a kind of a good out of it. Um, I connect with my higher self. May as well say it today because it's going to happen anyway. I allow my third eye to comfortably open. I ground myself to the healing center of the earth. I open myself to the healing power of the one. I let go of anything not useful to me now. If you wish to work with the Hathors, Hathors, seventh dimensional beings that will um, gently and easily assist you to make changes, if you wish to have their help, then just state, I choose to work with the Hathors. I'm going to also ask, you don't have to ask this because I'm asking for you. You can ask it if you want. But I ask that we all be placed in a um, field of protection while we do our work because I feel like we're going to be doing some work today. I mentioned in the previous um, Mayan calendar reading that today and tomorrow are... Uh, according to the Mayan calendar, there are galactic activation portals, like lots of big energies happening today. Lots of energy streaming in, actually activating your divine memory through your DNA. So it's a today and tomorrow are DNA activations days. And there's a, there's a dude, and I... I, I'm just going to say is the date. I don't want to look it up. But it was like he lived 630 to 680 something. So 50 some years. Um, probably in the Yucatan area. And in his tomb, um, there were specific dates that were written on the wall. So there were 13 days in a 260 period of time. There were 13 days that he recorded as significant days of the time period he was in. And he was um, a Mayan seer, mystic, prophet. I think they called him prophet. 
Toko Vatan or Vatan or something. Anyway, he had a great name. He wasn't like Steve. <laughs> it was Poco Vatan. I have to come up with a good name. You know, vocal, <laughs> vocal vacant. <laughs> I like it. Vocal vacant. That'll be my profit, profiteer, profiteer name. Okay, um, so one of the ways that I work with a lot of energy is through humor. Because when energy is coming up, typically that energy that's moving is combined, combining and opening up unresolved events within us that begin to release the energies of those events that are referred to as emotions. Energy in motion. E-motion. And just as a warning, I've been reading the area in The Gods and Every Man by Jean Shinoda Bolin. Really lovely book. They're about the Greek gods, which is fine. A lot of the Roman gods are very similar gods. Like in this thing, you know, Poseidon is the god of the water, you know, god of the mountains, whatever. And in, uh, in I think, Roman is Neptune, and they both have Triton. So they switched, you know, they switched their gods back and forth. Or maybe the gods actually existed as thought forms and actually did these things. Or maybe people just interpreted natural disasters and blamed it on the gods, and, and, and that just has continued ever since. Okay, so I asked the higher realms this morning to bring, to bring us uh, the gift of um, a card that would be useful for us to work with at this time. And of course, on this, um, yeah, 11th spectral month of liberation, we got a, a, the 11 of trumps coming from the higher realm. And the 11th of trumps has to do with strength. It's known as beauty and the beast. So this symbol um, represents the beauty that we all possess in our gifts, talents, and resources, which can quell the beasts or demons within our nature. Here is the picture of the beauty that has tamed and reigned the beast within, the multi-headed lion. She has an inherent faith within herself, which is symbolized by the fire urn that she looks to and holds. She has overcome old fears tied with the past, the grayed and darkened figures and objects in the background of the symbol. She rides Leo the lion, the astrological sign of creative power. And it is through utilizing our creative gifts and talents like Leo the lion, that not Tony, oh, that was the tiger. Um, but Leo the lion, that we can tame and reign the beasts within. Our creative power. And as the book, um, The Gods in Every Man, and she also has The Goddess in Every Woman, um, but in The Gods in Every Man, she talks about Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades, the three brothers that overthrew their father, who was the head god, and then they divided up into three, the spoils of their father's lives, life, lives, probably had many lives as a god, and then they divide them up, and Zeus got the main power, he got like the top of the pyramid, and then Hades and Poseidon, they got the bottom, Hades got the underworld, Poseidon got the water in the mountains, he could make earthquakes, he could have tidal waves and all sorts of stuff. But as it turns out, they were like the gods of a patriarchal society. In other words, they just got away with murder. They could get away with it. You can get away with murder, so to speak, 
is if you're rich and powerful and are well connected and are aligned with those who run the country. And if that switches to somebody else, you might be screwed. <laughs> you might find yourself in court again and again and again. And they might just strip you of all your resources by just keeping you in court until you run out of resources. And then they just let you go off and be a street person, probably. Something like that. Ooh. Okay. Um, this is the strength lust card. And lust comes from the root word luster which is radiance, luster and radiance, which means our light shining. So as we kind of, you know, we've been in a consciousness of polarity where we say, have said, um, rational mind, reason, conscious mind, rational mind, reason, good, unconscious, irrational mind, bad. So it's the Ir unconscious, irrational mind that is suggesting that we do these things. Kind of like the things that the gods did to humans. Rape, pillage, flood, kill, strike with lightning, earthquake, crumble their houses. This was all blamed on the gods. And I'm not saying it wasn't the gods. I just don't remember. I just don't have access to that information. Although I've seen a lot of rumblings in lives that I've gone back to with, on my own and with clients. A lot of rumbling, a lot of stuff happened. Okay, so that was the information from the higher realm that really look at this balance that we're getting into where we're having more and more information coming in from the con unconscious while we're conscious. So we had in some ways kept this division between our rational mind, um, uh, our conscious mind, rational mind, and our unconscious mind, our irrational mind. And we kind of kept them in separate compartments. But what's happening right now is they're just opening up. And we're realizing that we just have to do the work to come together inside ourselves as a whole person. That's what I think these tarot cards are about. They're about trying to stay in this consciousness we've been told, this is what you need to be as a human, this is how you have to behave, these are all the rules, join this church, go to the school, get this education, do things just like this, and you'll be accepted within society, don't do these things, we're going to find a way to torture you. <laughs> That's kind of, the, kind of the broad implications of not following the rules. And so, if someone comes along and suggests that you dive in. You dive into the waters of the unconscious Poseidon's waters, Neptune's waters. Dive in. Find out what's there. Feel what you feel. And here's the only thing you, you need to understand. You need to understand that you're, when you go back to events that were traumatic for you in the past and have not released the emotional energy of that trauma, that emotional energy will come up and you will need to learn to talk to yourself in this way. These are strong feelings from the past. I am not to act on these feelings. My job is to release these feelings and then just start releasing those feelings. So you can even make funny looks. You can go, or go, or go, oh, you can just make those sounds just in able to enable you to just release those energies of the past so you can come into the present. The more energies you release to the past, the more present you are. Okay, I want to just, I wish I just had a timer up there that just said, you've already gone over 14 minutes. Okay, so what did we get from the earth? Let's just say we got one of my favorite cards. There are just certain cards that just so, they just love. Here's one of them. 
the Three of Wands, if you recognize it, because we seem to get it a lot. This is from the Earth. And I think my father had a, um, I think it was in our, he had a coat of arms from his Scottish ancestry. And I think it was Virtue Mine Honor, but it, that may have come from somewhere else. But anyway, Virtue Mine Honor, um, Virtue. So the Three of Wands is symbolized by the quality of virtue or integrity. Integrity is the union. This is my favorite thing. I mean, just currently, I may have a more favorite thing later, or sometimes I just say this is my favorite thing. But when I really feel like this is my favorite thing, I say it. So this is one of my favorite things, this construct. Integrity is the union of mind, heart, and action. The union of mind, heart, and action. I just love that. I'm not going to go into it any deeper. That's all that needs to be said from what we've been working with. So we could call it the past, but I'm just going to say the past, present, and future, they're just all now. If you're dealing with stuff from the past, you're dealing with it now. It's always now. So here's the card we got from what we've been working with. And it's the Emperor card. And I think that's card number four. So we go to the Major Arcana to the Emperor card. And the thing at the top, it's, this comes from John Hyder, the Tao of Leadership. So you know it's more recent book when it's called the Tao of, you know, it was quite popular in, I don't know, 80s, 90s, maybe 70s. Anyway, what was written in this book, the Tao of Leadership, was this, enlightened leadership is service. Get that. And think, if you can think of one enlightened leader that you know of in the world currently. It's involved in service. Not selfishness. The leader grows more and lasts longer by placing the well-being of all above the well-being of self alone. This is something to hold as something we might choose in the future in terms of people that we are looking to as leaders, that they're really about service. Okay, the emperor represents the universal principle of power and leadership. This symbol is the pioneer, and I think I showed it to you. I'm pretty sure I did, but there it is again. Is the pioneer, the leader, the builder, the doer, and the visionary. Like Arius the ram, the emperor is the explorer whose curiosity and initiative is always on the forefront of human experience. He is the traveler with the globe in his hand who has the ability to make things stable, solid, and secure for himself and others. That's what we've been working with. And once again, the, the first card we got from above was the Strength Luster card. The card in the center of the Celtic Cross is the Nine of Wands. And the nine, here, I'm making you wait for this. The nine of wands is, it's beautiful, isn't it? And the nine of wands is the strength card. So currently at this moment, what we're working with is strength. This is spiritual and intuitive strength of vision. Astrolog astrologically, <laughs> astrologically, this card is sun and moon in Sagittarius, which symbolizes conscious and subconscious or unconscious strength. The nine of wands indicates strength of vision, perception, and intuition. It reflects strength on every level of consciousness, which is represented by the four intercepting arrows, 
mental strength, emotional strength, spiritual strength, and physical strength. Unlimited strength that comes from deep within. Remember when you connected to the deep self? That's the strength that comes from deep within. Okay. It's time to implement your strength. And what we got for what this will do for us What this is leading to is the Hierophant. And the Hierophant is number five. And the Hierophant represents the universal principle of learning and teaching that is experienced within our families and in life challenges that require us to trust our faith. Faith is asked for in different parts of human experience, and yet for many human beings, the test of faith and individuality is often challenged and experienced within family situations. The concept of family is represented by the hierophant symbol, by the central figures which symbolify, symbolize the universal representation of family, father, mother, child. A principle of learning and teaching. So the last thing I'm going to say is that I got my high school, you know, I don't know what they call it, newsletter, high school newsletter. I graduated from South Pasadena High School in 1969. And today they had the, they have at the back, the in memoriam. So these are the people who have gone. And what I was amazed by what the, well, first of all, the number of people that have left us in the years 2021, 20, 22, and 23 is phenomenal, really, when you think about it. But the fact that these people left, who were the class of 1940, and three of them passed away in the last few years from 1940 which means these people had to be pretty darn close to 100 years old, if not over 100. So if you go 40 to um, 2000, that's 60. And then if you go to 20, that's 80. And if they were 18 years when they graduated high school, that makes them 98. And if so, if they died in 21, 99, 22, 100, 2023, 20, 101. Three of them died in the past three years. Three died from the class of 1941. Five died from the class of 1942. I just thought it was interesting that there were still people alive who graduated from South Pasadena High School in 1940, and three of them could die in the past few years. Well, of course, the closer you get to 100, the greater the chances of you passing. But getting to 100 seems so far away from me right now. When I think of it, it's 27 years away, which as long as I've worked with this 28-year cleansing process started by Abrahamanad, the soul of the earth. Thank you very much for letting me participate in the process, Abrahamanad. It's been a learning experience for all of us. And but 27 years, 27 more years, I, I would get to be 100, provided that this new world is one I like and I want to hang out in. And it's coming in to a, to a world near you in the next 10 months is the completion of the cycle of purification. So if you haven't been on the bus, you might want to get on the bus too, because I've been on the bus for the whole time, 27 years. And this thing is kicking my butt. <laughs> That's all I can say. And I'm glad to be doing it because I may not have to do it again. That would be great. I may get to live in this everything is beautiful world. Who knows? All right. That's it for now. Um, I'll just say now must go and, 
and uh, you just have the day of your day of your life.